Well, they come as if from outer space in a variety of weird guises. Defender, Pac-Man, asteroids. To fans, they represent a challenge. When it comes to the arcade, it's very common for games to have a live system. Usually you'll start with three lives or retries, with few to no checkpoints, and when you run out of lives, the game's over. Indie games today sometimes also use a live system as a way to make the game harder, longer, or even as a way to emulate the feeling of an arcade gaming experience. But are lives good for every kind of game? Well, I thought about this for the game that I'm making called Echo Rift. At first I did just have a standard life system with three lives, game overs and checkpoints at the beginning of levels, but I'm not making a game that's going to be played in an arcade or a game that needs coins just to keep playing. It will be played at home, uh, it'll be a game that you will have already paid money for to own. Uh, we're not bound by the kinds of limitations that we are in an arcade. Often in games that use lives, we'll have a way for the player to earn more through gameplay. For instance, in the Sonic the Hedgehog games when you collect 100 rings. But left unchecked, it's quite possible to have so many extra lives earned that the entire concept of it becomes meaningless or it can be quite frustrating for new or experienced players to constantly be running out of lives and losing their progress, even if it is just to the beginning of a level. The alternative option that I'm going for in Echo Rift is to have checkpoints at certain points throughout each level, and if the player dies, they will start again at one of these checkpoints without having to do the entire level over again. The amount of times that a player dies will still be counted though, not just going into the player's stat page or anything, but also as a way to add a positive incentive for the player. What do I mean by a positive incentive? Well, rather than the negative incentive of avoiding losing lives to not replay levels from the beginning, instead I want to give in-game rewards to players who can complete levels without losing too many lives. For instance, completing a level without losing any lives could earn you an extra 100,000 points, but dying once would mean you'd only earn an extra 50,000 points, dying twice only an extra 25,000, and so on. Plus giving the player bonus gameplay items and cosmetics, rewarding them for not dying throughout the level. But what are the benefits of having a life system? Whilst it can be frustrating for some to have to redo progress, the idea of only dying a couple of times leading to having to start again can create a sense of adrenaline and make players more focused on each and every action that they do, trying their hardest to not make mistakes. This in contrast with having no proper live system in the game, uh, whilst it's more accessible to more players and more enjoyable for a larger casual audience, it might discourage players from playing with actual intention or precision unless implemented well enough. Having a live system may also serve the purpose of emulating the arcade experience if the game that you're making is designed intentionally to be like an arcade game. However, I would recommend that if you are making a game and you're adding a live system, take a moment to review if your game's design is suited for it. Too often I've seen indie platformers just release with a traditional arcade style live systems in an attempt to portray the game as retro or arcadey without understanding the kind of consequences that having a live system or not may actually cause. To summarize, it really depends on the game and its design as to if having a live system will work or not. I've gone for a system that uses not dying in a level as a positive incentive instead of a more negative incentive because I think that'll work best for Echo Rift, a shoot 'em up game being played in the home. However, to say definitively that traditional life systems don't work anymore would be incorrect. It comes down to the kind of game somebody wants to make and what kind of audience that they're targeting. 
Anyway guys, before this video ends, thank you to the more than 2,000 of you who have subscribed to Aurora Gameworks. It's nice knowing that so many of you out there think that our content is actually uh, worth your time and reading up on all of your comments and hearing what you guys have to say is amazing. Thank you guys so much. The journey's only really just begun. So guys, I've been Andrew for Aurora Gameworks. Take care everyone.